All right, welcome back guys to Dave's Small Engines. I have the lemon saw, as you've seen on Donnie Boy 73's channel here. Um, I just spent about 20 minutes taking the, I know it's dumb, some parts are still kind of greasy there, but 20 minutes taking the air compressor to this so I'm comfortable uh, reassembling it um, without worrying about any debris getting into the cylinder cases. Uh, or sorry, the engine case, the, the uh, bottom end there. So um, it's basically the way it was once I started diagnosing, just a little bit cleaner. Um, I have the cylinder here now, and I'm going to do the muriatic acid trick, and the intake side's fine, and um, use some 220 and then 600 grit sandpaper to take away some of these edges. And then I will continue with a new uh, piston and ring. So I've got the muriatic acid here. Uh, be careful when you're using this stuff. The fumes are pretty, pretty violent. So, um, you know, take your time. I'm gonna switch hands. So I'm gonna hold the cylinder with one hand and use the muriatic acid on the other. And what I'm doing is applying it to the cylinder where there is excess aluminum metal transfer from where the piston overheated and scored itself or melted itself onto the inside of the cylinder. So I wanna do this wherever there's aluminum transfer and I kinda of just wanna let it sit and bubble up because it's the aluminum essentially melting off of there. So as you can see here, as I rub with the Q-tip on the aluminum transfer, it's actually coming off. This wouldn't be that color unless the aluminum chunks that are stuck to the cylinder wall were coming off. So I let it sit, I rub it, I let it sit, you know, for five, 10 minutes, and then I take some sandpaper to it and clean up that cylinder wall. So first I'm gonna start with the 220 grit. And if, if I can, I go on this kind of 45 degree angle cross hatch pattern. I learned from Donnie Boy who learned that from his mentor. It's a good tip just to, um, to make sure the oil sticks to the cylinder walls for lubrication. What we don't want to do is go straight up and down because that's exactly the issue that we were having before, vertical grooves in the cylinder wall. Slowly but surely, that transfer starts to come off. When you see your sandpaper starting to get this color, the color of metal, feel it because it's pretty soft there and still pretty abrasive here. So you want to not waste your time sandpaper using sandpaper that isn't gritty or it's worn. Okay, so as I wrap up here with the 600 grit sandpaper, you can see that this has come across now a lot smoother. Now, it's not perfect. There will still be you know, some very minute edges in here, but I'm gonna give this a try and see how it works. If I sand any more out of here, I'm concerned that I will lose compression and I may just be looking at a replacement kit but this looks okay for me to try at this point. All right so the next step is to pull the piston off of the saw and I'm going to access this circlip 
and then move it. There's one on each side, and that's what holds the wrist pin into the connecting rod. Sometimes they go flying. That's okay. The new kit comes with them, but I found this one here. Okay, so to get the wrist pin out, the trick I use is I find a socket or an extension that fits inside of the piston that presses up against the wrist pin, and I just kind of tap it out. Just like that. So the wrist pin goes in through here onto this bearing, which is goes inside of this connecting rod. Okay, so you can see here that there's still some debris from my um, air compressor job earlier. So I'm gonna clean this up first before I do any reassembly. Okay, so the piston I purchased is a, I call a mid-grade. It's a golf piston kit for the Husqvarna 346 XP. 44.3 mil. This is the newer style 346 XP, so it is 44.3 mil. Some of the other ones are a bit older. Single piston ring, looks to be, um, you know, you can see the grooves here. It used to, looks to be a quality aftermarket replacement. So the plan is now, use a bit of lubricant, get this all set back in here, and then get the cylinder on top. So one of the tricks I like to do is install one of the circlips in so that when I have, when I'm working down here, putting the piston back on the connecting rod, I don't have to reach in both sides. Um, so I now know that I can just set the piston on like this with the arrow facing towards the exhaust. And then the wrist pin slips through and I only have to put the one circlip on the one side. So I'm gonna give my bearing a squirt. Then I can start the wrist pin. Line it all up. Slide it in. Got some more crud here. Got to do a better job of cleaning the bottom of this off. Okay, so now I have the wrist pin all the way in. Now it's just the circlip on the side. Now, you got to make sure it's all the way seated and that you can see the groove for the wrist pin on this side. So as you can see here, this is the aftermarket circlip and this is the OEM one. I actually just had this one bend, which is making me question the, um, the integrity of this clip. So I'm gonna actually flip the saw back over and install the OEM one on the other side as I have the OEM one here. I think I just trust them more. Making sure it's seated. There, I'm happy. Okay, now I'm just gonna give a squirt to the lower end bearing. Very good. Now, just the base gasket and the cylinder. So this is a brand new base gasket. Gotta just line it up with the notch here and then the odd 
corner notch on this side. So it sits in just like this. And then you can put the ring on and then the cylinder. All right, so this operation is going to be way easier if I take the brake bar off. All right, so the operation now is to pinch this piston ring together and then get the cylinder on. Pesky. At the best of times. Just like that. Sure the base gasket is still lined up. Base gasket is in. That's what we like to see. All right, now it's the four head bolts, four mil Allen. Of course, I do these by hand to ensure that I haven't cross threaded anything. I want to make sure as I tighten these, nothing's binding. All right, so this clasp, this clasp can be kind of difficult on the intake boot. So because I'm curious, I'd like to know what the compression is before the piston and ring have a chance to mate to the cylinder. So I'll do a quick test. Hundred and thirty PSI. Not the best, but um, we'll see what happens once I get it uh, running. Now, just as a precautionary measure, I'm going to throw the spark plug back in here. What I don't want is any of the crud falling into the now clean combustion chamber. All right, because my saw only came with one exhaust bolt, I've got another bolt I borrowed out of a Husqvarna fifty. Uh, it's a bit shorter, so for the purpose of this video, to see if I can get it running, and so I can order one of these, I'm going to forego the heat shield while I install the muffler. You 
can see how much longer this side is. And what I don't want to do is strip the threads inside the cylinder head, so I'm not going to overly tighten the bolt that doesn't belong there. I'm basically just going to use it to hold the gaskets. Yeah, I'm only going to get a couple threads, so I don't want to over tighten that. In fact, I'm just going to do it by hand. And then lightly with the ratchet. I'm going to strip it. And then this side, of course, I can tighten with the impact. Awesome. Muffler on. Good. Okay, we can put the brake back on now. Okay, now I can install the handle. I'm not going to put the muffler bracket on right now. I know I need to order this bolt. So once that bolt comes in, I'll get it all back together. And I don't really need it for testing purposes. This part can always be a little bit tricky because it's awkward. So for this reason, I don't do everything tight until I've got it all lined up perfectly. And last but not least, the anti-vibration And there we are. Other than the cover here, it's all back together. So why don't we see if we can get it started? So I've got some fuel here that I've mixed at 45 to one. My mentor, Donnie boy, 73 on YouTube, told me that's the best way to make sure that you're not gonna run anything too lean. Now, I haven't done a carburetor kit or any carburetor adjustments on this saw whatsoever, so I don't know if the diaphragms have dried up or anything like that, but let's prime it and see if we can get fuel into the carb. There we go. Spark plug boot on. Let's see if it starts. So I'm guessing that the carburetor was dry and um, now it's uh, pumping fuel through and I'm just going to raise the idle a bit here.
There we go, sounds pretty healthy. All right guys, so I have an 18 inch bar I'm gonna use just for testing purposes. Uh, I'm not convinced 18 is the right size. It's a, it's a 325 chain, it's not a 3 8 gauge. So I'm not convinced that 18 is the perfect, saw, um, perfect bar for the size. Maybe if you guys can let me know in the comments if you have experience using this saw. I was thinking more along the, line of, um, along the lines of a 16 inch bar uh, to really let this thing scream. But for now, this is what I have and I'll throw it on just to test. Okay guys, here it is all buttoned up. Got the cover on, the chain and bar on. So let's fire it up and uh, show you what it looks like. There we have it. Well, here it is. The lemon saw is complete. Um, not so much a lemon anymore, guys. This thing uh, is awesome. Um, let me start it up, show you cutting here, and uh, show you what, you know, an hour and a half, couple hours, and um, a nice replacement piston will get you. So there you have it, the Husqvarna 346 XP, all finished and ready to cut. Take care.